now, if I were a pair of pliers, where would I be? It's a wrench. Hmm. Nope. Uh, wire cutters. La la la. I love how I can just say whatever I want really loud. And it doesn't matter because nobody's here. Hello! Hello! Hmm. This is the room where I'm doing my work because this is the only room that has really, really clean carpet and it's not gonna get my sail dirty. And like all the other rooms are like this kind of floor. This is the room where all the stuff for the boat show goes, I think. Yeah, this is all boat show stuff. Boat show signs. Two days until I'm going to single hand my boat up to Seattle Shoal Shoal Marina from Olympia. And I realized that the furler on my boat is really old. It's probably from the 80s. It's some kind of old crow furl. And I was trying to take it apart because I needed to get a new force day because the, um, the wire was coming in late at the top. The previous owner had not installed a halyard restrainer, so whenever you unfurled the furler, probably the ball bearings hadn't been lubricated, it was twisting too much on the force day, and over time that happened, so when the yard took down the mast, they told me I should probably just get a new force day while it was down. So I was able to get that made um, within our store, and I um, decided for this, I am not really in a place to get a new furler. Those things, if you don't know, can be two to three thousand dollars and it just wasn't something I was expecting right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert one of my jibs. I have three jibs. One of them I'm going to convert to hang on because when I go up to Seattle on Tuesday, I would love to sail the boat. It's supposed to be really good wind, 13 knots gusts of 20 and it's all going to be from my stern so I'm going to be able to be on the run the whole time or beam reach depending on um, where I'm going through. So I really want to sail and I got this set yourself grommet kit um, and I'll show you what it looks like and it's got a, um, it's got a, well I've got a hammer somewhere around here, I brought a hammer. Um, so this is the backing plate you hammer onto so you don't ruin the surface that you're on. I think this is called the anvil. This is a base and this is the cutter that you, you put down and you use the hammer on to cut it. And then these are the grommets. I chose a half inch inner diameter grommets because I wasn't sure how big the hanks were going to be um, and it looks like they're going to fit just fine. And I'm going to space them about two feet apart because if you do it any more than three or so, I read that it can cause the sail to pucker and heavier winds, so I just like to account for that for any kind of wind I'm going to encounter in the future. I know that you, um, it's better to use spur grommets like on the Sailrite website, but I just decided to get the highest quality um, traditional grommets I could find because I was going to launch in a couple days. I did not have time to wait for Sailroy to send them to me, and I chose the oldest, uh, most worn out sail I could find, so that in case I wanted to do something different in the future, I wasn't doing something to my ice or sail, but I think this will probably do just fine um, for the near future, for the winds I'm gonna be sailing in for the next couple years. First thing I'm gonna do is measure Two feet. I've already done a couple, but I wasn't filming, so I really just wanted to get going, or rhythm going. So two feet from center hole to what will be center hole of next grommet here. And put the 
backing block on it. And then here's the cutting tool. And I'm gonna put it, I'm putting it just right behind where the stitching is so that it doesn't cut the stitching. So cutting out a hole. Take a while to do this. Oh, that's so close. Oh, so close. Oh, I'm heavy towards this side. I gotta lean it in the other side. There, that's coming up. All right. Okay. Just a little bit more, and I'll get it. Boom. One thing I realized is that the instructions say, remember, always use a mallet, not a steel hammer. Well, I've been using a steel hammer, and the only thing I have is a steel hammer. I couldn't find another hammer in this entire place, and I did look. So if I ruin my anvil, and I'm already putting little dents in it, I still need to go move my boat, and I can order a replacement anvil for about the same cost as another day at the boatyard. So I'd say it's worth it. So all that hammering got it about halfway down. So it's not a spur grommet, but it feels super heavy duty. This is super heavy duty. It costs more than the other ones that I saw on Amazon. And I know this is the one that's sold by like Seattle Fabrics, which uh, seems to really take pride in their products. So um, I think I trust it for just for this, for what I'm doing right now. Yeah, still, I think it's actually like, as you get towards the bottom, it's even harder because it rolls down that collar, it keeps rolling it, and the roll keeps getting thicker, so you're hammering the thicker and thicker roll. So, and it, so it goes down like exponentially slower. You know you got it when you know you got it when the washer is not able to spin anymore. It's still spinning. It's just barely spinning still. One more time. Got it. Oh, 
Oh shit, man, this grommet cracked. It cracked. Oh, why did that happen? It looks like one of the grommets cracked in two places. I don't know why it cracked. It could be the, I don't know, did I, maybe I hammered it too much of an angle and I didn't realize it. But I'm gonna stop right now because I wanna leave, I still have enough room in here. See, it's still up enough that if I get my multi-tool with a little saw on it, I can saw it out through this here. If I hammer it down anymore, I'm not going to be able to get it out that way. So for the sale on Tuesday, I'm just going to make do. I'm Maybe I'll skip this grommet, or I will just tie a string through it um, just to keep the sale in. But um, the wind's not going to be too heavy, and I think I can put it off till after I get up to Seattle before I have to to get that out and put another one in. But I mean, one out of one out of 18 grommets isn't that bad. That's ruined. So I think I know why the grommet cracked. Because all the other ones, I was following these instructions very well. Tap the die lightly at first, and then increase strength. And on the 11th grommet, I got a little bit. I guess I got a little bit cocky. I, I stopped thinking it mattered, and it does matter. I'm looking around this place for like only the second time since I've worked at Fisheries. It's so cool. This is an old building that was an old warehouse that used to be way more functional than it is now. Like, look at this. Polar panels? <laughs> It has a bike in it now. It has a bike and an old sail in it. That is like a condensing unit. You know, there's all these random doors that used to go somewhere that don't go somewhere anymore. Like this door is all boarded up and like all these walls are all boarded up. Like it's so cool to be in here alone and like have total access to this building. This is where all the old shelving is stored. I mean, that's not too interesting, but like, look, there's just so many rooms. There's so many rooms in here that like aren't being used or have a plan to be used. And that's the door. And then there's like three different staircases. Like this is a staircase. I think it goes to some kind of office, but I don't want to go up there right now. And then this is a staircase that goes to the boiler room, um, which I don't need to go in there. And here's another staircase that I think goes to some kind of other warehouse upstairs. And then there's like a beeping noise. Like there's been a beeping noise for a long time. And I don't, it's not coming from here. At first I thought it was coming from up that third staircase, but I went up there and it's not. And uh, I think it's coming from, um, this, uh, building is shared with and, uh, it is closed down because of COVID. They're just not doing business. So I think it might, uh, be from next door and it's just a, like a, a fire or like a smoke detector with low battery or something. I didn't, uh, I don't think I set off any alarms. So I, there's only one alarm. The only alarm is at the door. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I entered my code and that was fine, so I have nothing to worry about. A couple more grommets cracked and, um, I went around this warehouse again and I found a rubber mallet, which is exactly what the instructions said I should use. While I'm almost done, I found it when I had only two grommets left to do. Wish I had found it sooner, but it was sitting right there on the uh, rigging workbench. And um, I'm doing the last grommet right now, 
and it's not cracking. I'm hitting it really hard and it's not cracking. So that might be why. Um, Seventeen grommets in about four hours, right before my hand was ready to fall off. I'm about ready to set sail. Now I'm gonna take the Swedish jib snap, which is this. This is jib snap number one. There's a number two, which is smaller. I chose the number one because I had a bigger grommet. And um, I realized that I installed the first one uh, so that I would have to open it left-handed. I realized I want to open it right-handed. And I realized that after I had hammered down this little, uh, uh, finger, whatever you call it. So from now on, I'm gonna hammer them down so I can open it right-handed, and somehow, someday, I'm gonna pry that open and figure out how to make it like the others because it's gonna drive me nuts. So um, uh, right now, I am going to skip a grommet, every other grommet, because at Fishery Supply, we only had 10 big snaps in stock, and um, I wanted it to distribute it as evenly as possible. I'm going to have something in the every other grommet. Like, I'll probably for now just tie some rope, some thin rope around um, the four stage just so I can get the boat home and have um, the load of the sail distributed as evenly and um, as between as many points as possible so that no one point is going to fail or no one grommet is going to get torn out. All right, want it the opposite of that way. So I want it to be facing like down like this because then when I'm putting the sail up, I'll be, I'll be facing like this and I can grab on the side with my right hand and open it like this and put it around the forestay. in there you see had just enough room and this is also really good because later on when I do get a new furler um, I will also have the grommet still installed so that in case my new furler ever breaks one day when I'm offshore I will have the grommet and I will have the hanks that I can put back on the sail if I need to take down the furler at any time so it's always good to have um, some sort of redundancy or a simpler option in case your high-tech thing decides to stop working. the last hank, the last hank on the last grommet. Let's make sure we get it the right way. Ah, yes. All right guys, we are as done as we're gonna be today. We've got all the hanks that 
Fishery Supply has in stock right now on this sale. And they're all hammered down so they can't come out. And I actually, uh, I don't think it's gonna matter that I uh, cracked those grommets because I happened to crack the ones that were um, one after the other, like not, not together, not right together. So uh, my original plan is still holding strong. Uh, I've got every other one with a solid non-cracked grommet and a jib hank. And with the cracked ones for now, I'll just tie a string around them for the force day. And then as soon as I get my boat to shilshul, I'm going to saw out those cracked grommets and replace them with good grommets using the proper rubber mallet. And I will never deviate from the instructions again.